Shere Khan. Louis' secret daughter, it's Polly Walsh. And their team captain, John Lopp. And facing them tonight, standing out from the crowd, it's Richard Ioadi. Golly Josh, it's Josh Whittacom. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, a half-hour session of lovemaking burns between 150 and 250 calories, which means every time I make love, I burn three calories. <laughs> Oceanographers say killer whales are actually dolphins. Dolphins are actually gay sharks. And sharks are just bears that have been shaved and pushed into the sea. <laughs> 40% of blokes have named their car. I call mine Jimmy. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panelist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. John's team, what do you think people have been talking about this week? Mike Tyndall. <laughs> Naughty old Mike Tyndall has been filmed online uh, in a club cavorting with a lady and he said no it's all right we were, we were friends from uni and then someone remembered that he didn't go to uni <laughs> and then he said oh it's all right it was a friend from the wedding which is good because it means if that's what he's doing to wedding guests at some point in the next couple of weeks the queen is going to get it <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a picture of him? he looks like a big toe <laughs> <laughs> I can absolutely see that. Yes, he does. <laughs> the only thing they saw him do is he rubbed his face into her breasts. Went like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a rugby player, that's basically a scrum. <laughs> <laughs> there was no sound on the video, so this is all... That's in your head, you've seen that. <laughs> well, there's got to be some noise. If you've seen his face and her breasts, there's going to be a noise. <laughs> you put those two together, it's not going to be... very least. I should make it clear, we don't know exactly what happened with Mike Tyndall and this girl. The main objection I would have had to it was it was a dwarf-throwing event. I mean, surely that's where your moral compass gets a bit screwy. If you're at a dwarf-throwing event and there's people chucking dwarves around, <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't feel like I really knew what was right or wrong anyway, you know. <laughs> the dwarves are flying past, you go, I don't know, am I in a real world or not? Is it, <laughs> is it all right if I rub my face in her breasts? I don't know what's... What's right and what's wrong well, anymore? I think the, the one thing you wouldn't feel is what Tyndall felt, which is horny. <laughs> I thought you were watching Dwarf going, bloody hell, I really fancy that one. <laughs> if the cinematic history of New Zealand has taught us anything, it's that nobody tosses a dwarf. <laughs> 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 Well, surprisingly, that's not one of the most talked about things. But this is the story that Mike Tyndall was spotted on CCTV acting inappropriately with a mystery blonde. Tyndall was chatting to the girl at a dwarf throwing contest. It was entirely innocent. He just wanted her to help him toss off his little fella. Sean <laughs> <laughs> Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, I think everybody's talking about Dale Farm. Dale Farm, it sounds Dale lovely. Farm. Whereabouts is that? <laughs> Sounds like a like, nice little children's programme, doesn't it? Today on Dale Farm, someone's throwing bricks at the police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand. It's one of those things that draws sort of people sort of step on one side of a line or the other, don't they? Like, if you read the Daily Mail, you want the gypsies to go. Anyone, I don't think there's any Daily Mail reader in the country who thinks, oh, I think they should be able to stay on that land. And the more guardian reading side would go, well, you know, there's other circumstances here. The point is that they've built on land, not only that they don't have planning permission for, they don't own. So if they are allowed to stay, you know, I should be allowed to go there and build something that I want to build, like a foghorn factory. <laughs> Is this is a crazy dream I've always had. <laughs> <laughs> they made an episode of Grand Designs about, uh, about Dale Farm. I remember the strap line of one episode was, Winter's drawing in and they still haven't got planning permission. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they built loads of houses without planning permission and then they built a wall to keep the bailiffs from coming in, which they yeah. didn't have planning permission for either. 
Yeah. I love that though, gypsies versus bailiffs. That's like a Sky TV fight that most people would pay to see. <laughs> that would be awesome. And they can fight as well, these travellers. Mm. I mean, I fought a few in the day and they are, they are tough. They, they love, so they so you, know that, you know that Snatch is, is a film, not a documentary. <laughs> thing about the whole thing is those shots of caravans and people have written stuff on them to you know sympathy sort of graffiti on their caravan saying oh, I'm really ill please don't chuck me out of my caravan mm. have, have a look at this is my favorite one <laughs> sick person here that's where the local nonce lives yeah <laughs> I'm guessing I'm not sure if that's the case well one of the strangest ones is the girl has had a, a neck attached to some kind of noose oh yeah says, if you open this gate she will die have a look at this. Have a look. So, danger of death. Behind this gate is a woman attached by her neck. If you attempt to open this gate, you will kill her, so it'll be your fault. I think that's really ramping up. It's like a new sort of fairground attraction, isn't it? it used to be like just hooking a duck. <laughs> <laughs> open the gate, kill the lady. <laughs> Maybe I've got the wrong spirit there. <laughs> I had a similar incident where I came out of my house and a spider had built a web across my door. Right. <laughs> this is not a similar incident. Is, it... <laughs> yeah. oh, is that Basildon Council? I have some advice for you. <laughs> a similar thing. It's a, it's a similar tense. I can't come out because I'll get stuck in the web and How die. long have you been in your house? <laughs> Me that people are always surprised so there's the gypsy community very angry but they live in caravans like i'd be a bit testy if i had to listen to my nan having a dump while i was having toast <laughs> <laughs> they kept saying oh, it's going to be a war and then the first quote i read of someone who was going down as reinforcements for a gypsy was 70 year old anne livingston from norwich it's hardly platoon if she turns <laughs> up <laughs> they're calling it the battle for basildon and apparently the town hasn't seen a crisis like this since they ran out of fake tan <laughs> Like the only way is Essex meets Big Fat Gypsy Wedding. You've even got like a guy from Big Brother in the. It's like a, a reality TV wet dream. There, there was a gypsy in uh, in Big Brother this year, uh, Kerry Katona. <laughs> Have a look and see whether Dale Farm is one of the most talked about things this week. saga of the ongoing Dale Farm gypsy evictions. Has it really come to the point where 400 families can't illegally build an entire illegal town on an illegal campsite illegally without Johnny Law getting involved? <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. Two things still to get. <laughs> Amir, what else have you been talking about? I read, I read in the news about that 1.5 billion. This is the trader at the UBS. Trader, yeah. 1.5 billion pounds he lost and they, they've discovered it and they, they arrested him last week. <laughs> what I find amazing though, that they can lose 1.5 billion pounds and nobody notices, but if I go five pounds over my overdraft, I get like a 40 quid letter straight away. <laughs> <laughs> if ever there's a work meeting you want filmed though, it's that one though, isn't it? Of him going, uh, <coughs> Jim, can I have a word? <laughs> 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 what is it, a new deal? Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, lo I've, I've lost, um... I've yeah. lost 10 billion. You've what? Ah, I've only lost 1.5. <laughs> Imagine you're actually relieved now. <laughs> he was arrested at, uh, was it 3.30 a.m. Yeah. at the bank's offices. They arrested him. I just got this idea, he was actually he was there with the offices trying to shred himself. He was just going... <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. Richard, any, <laughs> any thoughts on road traders? I'm trying not to get involved. <laughs> I'm just here for the companionship. And um, you know, just to Did we... meet people, and um, frankly, just to be out. Did... <laughs> I should have more opinions on this rogue trading story. I haven't. <laughs> um, I just, I just don't think perhaps this is the forum to solve. It. <laughs> and as such, I just think we should move on <laughs> to less fiscally difficult. Issue. Let's have a look and see whether the road trader is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, a road UBS trader has been charged after losing £1.5 billion. The only way this guy could be in more trouble is if he'd looted the money from JD Sports. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
OK, fingers on buzzers. One more thing to get. What else have the nation been talking about this week? Is uh, it the Ken Loach retrospective at the BFI? <laughs> 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 well, I believe they have a new print of Kez that is pretty special. Yeah. Do yourself a favour, get down. <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers. Not you, Richard. <laughs> I just, you know, it's become needlessly combative, Jimmy. <laughs> 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 As I said, I'm just here for the day out. <laughs> I've had a lovely time. <laughs> and let, let's move on and do some bloody great quizzing. <laughs> Surely everyone's talking about the Liberal Democrat Conference. Try and stop me! <laughs> Yay! Birmingham for a week with Lib Dems! Come on! <laughs> been rumbled now, haven't they? Like, last year they were the cool party, and now you look at them and they all just look a bit weird. Like, any Liberal Democrat, like Sarah Tether and Danny Alexander, they just look like, if you ask them if they wanted a drink, they'd say, oh, I don't like drink, I just never like the taste. <laughs> oh, sod off! <laughs> See, my favourite guy that attended was the guy that had... F he was a big Lib Dem, but he had a full body tattoo. <laughs> that is a bad look when a whole audience goes, ooh. <laughs> that is an error. What I like about that is that you're looking at him and at no point you think, well, that's a bad haircut. <laughs> Do you know what I love about him more than anything? I love the fact he goes, well, I'm going to the Lib Dem conference, better put a tie on. <laughs> at least he's unique. At least he's like, no single unique thing has come out of the Liberal... Day. There was a point in Nick Clegg's speech where he genuinely says, Do you know, the Lib Democrats, what we need to do is not just stop bad things, but do good things. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God someone said it. It's time for goodies in part. I haven't bought this cape for no reason. I can fly! <laughs> there was this thing with Nick Clegg. There was a Daily Mail story about um, how they'd said he was going to stand down or promised his wife he was going to stand down. And he said it was 2,000% wrong, which presumably means they could have been 1,900% less wrong and they still would have been 100% wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic margin of error. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing. They had, um, Hugh Grant was there, and they said he had a, um, seven-minute breakfast with Nick Clegg. He's clearly done that thing you do on a blind date where you go, just phone me seven minutes in. If it's going <laughs> badly, I'll pretend there's an emergency. <laughs> what, Colin first dropped out of a rom-com? Yeah, I'll be there fast, don't worry. <laughs> Should we have a look and see whether the Lib Dems is one of the most talked about things this week? Let's have a look. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> so, those were the most talked about stories this week. But in other news, the IMF has lowered Britain's growth forecast from jack shit to fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> and a 5.4 tonne NASA satellite is expected to fall back to Earth on Friday. Although officials cannot say exactly where it will hit, they're hoping Dale Farm. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, I can tell you that Sean, Holly and Amir have two points. John, Josh and Richard have one. <laughs> Sean, Holly and Amir, pick a question. Well, I think we have to go for the boxing picture. Mm. OK. All right. What do British people prefer, ballet or boxing? I well, think boxing. Yeah. You think? Oh, for sure, yeah. Who knew Amir I mean, was going to go you, boxing? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> you, you get a lot of women now um, who like boxing. When I fight, 65% of my tickets are bought by women. I don't know if that's because of boxing or because of me, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> women never... You never think about women going to a boxing fight. It's like women going to a football match. I mean, you get a lot going, but 65%... I've got another shot for you. They're in the pubs now. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bloody laundrette the other day. There's a man doing the service washes. <laughs> it's got mental. What I want to know about this question is: when you say ballet or boxing, is it to watch or to take part? Oh, to watch. To I like. I mean, I, I like boxing. I like watching boxing. <laughs> I think they should make it a bit more entertaining, though, by having car horns in the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got a boxing question for you. Go on, OK, man. youngest ever Olympic medal winner, I believe. Yep. You got silver. Yep. Silver in boxing, that is second. There's only two of you in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> no, no, 
did he come third? Yeah, that went to the ref. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 28 of us in the whole competition in that one division. Yeah. I, I was the youngest, I mean, all the rest were like... It was amazing to watch. Then. It's amazing. I don't see why you can't still be in the Olympics. The you know tennis what, players are in it. Exactly. It's the only sport, I think, which don't let professionals get involved in the Olympic Games. Imagine they did. It would be so competitive. It would be brilliant. So once you've gone professional, you can't go back to being unprofessional? No, amateur. 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 Yeah, amateur. I'm professional. I'm not sloppy. They don't just turn up with one glove. <laughs> <laughs> Professional. <laughs> He's wearing skis for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's a boxing match. You've got you've got pretty good reactions. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about being uh, super super lightweight. Super lightweight. So it's all about the reactions. It's about the, the, speed, the speed. The speed is incredible. I mean, speed is power, isn't it? Okay. Well, I, I want I want you to obviously have a good experience this evening. I want you to learn something. Have a look at this American schoolboy. Watch and learn. Are you going trick or treating? No problem. <laughs> They've clearly set it up as a bit of a gag, and we're going to shock him. He's going to be scared. Not that scared. <laughs> Knocked him out, him back in the bin. Yeah. That was a good show, wasn't it, around the gym? <laughs> yeah, the other thing that, I mean, uh, whatever, I'm not telling you how to suck eggs. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not your coach. I can't... I can't teach you how to win the fight. I can just guide you. <laughs> Have a look at this, and I want you to think about this when you step in the ring, yeah? Have a look. That was 1993, so it's sad to think that both of those cats are probably now dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I want to know when they stopped, because like in the boxing, they used to box like that. Like a uh, hundred years ago, people used to box. You're man. I mean, it's changed now. <laughs> it's changed. I'm not a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's the pictures. That, they, that's ago, how they used to pose. They didn't ago. used to do, go like that, did they? Have you not, they seen, they did, they have you not seen the Sherlock Holmes films? They definitely did. They yeah, used they to punch did. like that. They're not documentaries. That's not how Sherlock Holmes fought. Yes, it is. Hang on, Sherlock Holmes did not exist. When you knock someone, have you've knocked people out, don't you? Okay, in I mean, the ring. In yeah. the ring, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. I didn't mean. <laughs> Oh, to be a laptop in here. <laughs> it must feel amazing, but also there must be a part of it when you knock someone out, you're thinking, brilliant, I've finished work early. Yeah. Mate, <laughs> 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 hey, I'm off. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so how quickly do you get home after the fight? Because that, that's a brilliant point, isn't it? If you no. knock him out and then you go, West Wing's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, just depends, it depends what the fight is. Normally I can be home within an hour. <laughs> We're going to the fight, going, get, having the fight and they're coming back home an hour. That would have made a terrible ending to Rocky, which is how, <laughs> how soon he was back on his sofa watching the television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm home, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So love. Adrian! World champion. Adrian, can you make us a cup of tea? <laughs> so what's the biggest audience you've, you've fought in front of? Um, about uh, 35,000. Yep. 35,000? Where, yep. where was that? That was in Cardiff. And was that like, was it in, was it an official thing or was it on the street? <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest audience ballet get? Do you know? Oh, I did a, when I did ballet there was 36,000. <laughs> and 66% of them were men. So. <laughs> Have you been to the ballet show? Well, I'm part of the whole ballet boom going on. The <laughs> people go and watch a ballet and it's people telling a story only using their legs. <laughs> It's just <laughs> cosmic, man. <laughs> so they're just using their legs, like that, dancing around using their legs, and people are going, it's like Skippy. It's like, what? The princess has been taken to the castle by the wicked witch? <laughs> and they go, yeah. <laughs> but it's great, just people telling a story only using legs. How good is that? <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's get an answer on this. John? Ballet, I think, are we? Okay. Yep. Right, guys. Sure. You're going yeah. ballet? What what do you think? Think? Boxing. Boxing. All right, I can tell you the answer is 56% uh, people prefer boxing to ballet. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> for those who haven't seen Black Swan, it's a powerful story about a man who gets a blowjob for going to watch a film about ballet. <laughs> Pretty sure that was my take-home message. Um, <laughs> and the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Top way to boost your self-confidence. Go on. 
Uh, I had a joint birthday party with someone with less friends than me. <laughs> I've never felt so high in my life. John, how did you feel about that? <laughs> is it have a drink before you leave the house? N number four is get drunk, yeah. To boost your self-confidence, a couple of drinks. Yeah. See those guys in the park, they're having a whale of a time. Yeah. <laughs> they could take on the world. They could take on the pigeons. <laughs> Say anything for the guys in the park, they're not in there going, oh, I feel like we're getting stared at. <laughs> yeah, I think there's too much corned beef on this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, this question. Most people do not lack self-confidence. You want to go watch The X Factor and watch swaggering arseholes. <laughs> the, the question should be, how do you undermine people? Because most people <laughs> just need bringing down a peg or two. <laughs> All these pop stars with the... That they do, isn't it? <laughs> when they do that, just changing your toothpaste. Does that improve self-confidence? <laughs> a lot of adverts I see suggest that by switching a brand of toothpaste, yeah. you can really give not just your teeth, but your whole life a bit of a lift. <laughs> I find the best way is to lie to yourself. <laughs> about who you are, what you've done, and where you're going. <laughs> what sort of thing have you told yourself, Richard? That it's all all right. <laughs> it's a massive lie. It is a lie. I mean, it's, it's fact. I mean, look, it's not true. <laughs> and what about where you're going? What, what do you say to yourself? Yeah, I say I am going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> is that on the... That's not... That's okay. not one of things. <laughs> OK, top way to boost your self-confidence. Go to the gym. Working out. Oh. That's the right answer. Exercise. <laughs> Yeah, the top way to boost your self-confidence is to get fit. Of course, you don't need to get fit. If Gok Wan has taught us anything, it's that the easiest way to boost your self-confidence is to strip down to your bra and pants and stand in the window of Debenhams. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Josh and Richard have one point. Sean, Holly and Amir have four points, which means Sean's team are tonight's winners. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. If you want more, tune into 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut on Saturday. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>